Hi guys, so this next video is just about going through your uh, eBay setting preferences. So we're just going to go to account settings. Yeah, so what we're doing now, we're just setting up all the settings that we need to do uh, for on the account. So we'll just start with just going like an overview of looking at personal information. So you see that on the left there, it's clicked on account settings and then it's brought up this screen as you can see now. So if we click on personal information. And this one, you're not actually going to change, really change anything. You're just going to check that everything's there that needs to be there. So everything is there. So you can see if you were to click on like registered name, address, and phone number, on edit on that one, you would have all your information. You got your registered email address, and you can see above there it says it's a business account. So make sure it does say business account. If it doesn't, it means you have got a personal one. I don't think you'd be able to get this far anyway because you can't have this seller hub unless you've got a business account. So yeah, this is all information already there. So we don't have to do anything about this. Next one's addresses. And this one, we will have to put some information in. Um, so again, there's your registration address, email, phone number at the top. So that can be changed at any time. And it, you can't change your name, but you can change the business name and all that kind of information. Yeah, precisely. Now also, with return, um, with viewer return addresses, so that's something that we need to yeah. uh, take a quick look at. So your at. primary post address will be your business address. That should already be in there, but we will show you in just a moment on there as well. And then you've got your post from address, which again, it will be your address, so same thing, and the return address is likely to be the same. It's just that sometimes, like for example, I now have a company, so I have a lim limited company with mine, so my actual limited company address is different to my return address. So some, at some point they may be separate. Yes, precisely. So with a uh, return address as well, this is obviously where people are gonna, when you get returns, um, you do just upload a label from Amazon, so it goes straight from the bar straight to Amazon, which is really handy. Mm. However, sometimes people will ignore your label for whatever reason, yeah. and they will pay for their own postage, which don't worry, you will not have to reimburse, but it can end up back at your your address. Yeah. And then to do, if that does ever happen to you, you simply need to locate the um, the item on on e on Amazon and get the uh, return address yourself, the return label, sorry, and print it off and stick it on and take it to the raw to a raw ma mail center. Yeah, it's no it's no big deal, but it is a bit of hassle, and so we want to try to avoid this, and that's why we're changing our return address right now. So, for example, on the name, I'll put please use return label provided. And this is what the reason why we put this here. I know it's not our name as such. The reason why we put it there is just to say, just to tell people to try and use that label. So for the people that haven't seen the label for whatever reason, because the odd person doesn't, they see that, then they see this, and they go, okay, they might check for the label or message you. So it's good just to let them know. But we will also now put the actual details where we want them to send send the parcels to. And this is just so if they do decide to uh, send them to us for whatever reason, because some people might not have a printer and they might not have someone that can go to a library or have a friend who can print uh, the label off. So the odd person does do that, um, ends up just sending it to us so they're right on the parcel. Um, so as you can see, we're just putting the, the address in now. I mean, we would uh, use put, please use return label at the top, but we probably put our name somewhere in there as well, just so they know who they're addressing it to. They usually put our name because they, they can see our name on uh, on our details. But um, again, they use this information as the as the return. Yeah, I just oh. put this city in there. Oh. Do you put your name at the top? I put my name at the top. No, I don't. All right. And that's just to make it clear, but then they will start, can still send it to you and you just receive it uh, with a written, uh, probably likely a written label. But it's as simple as that. So that's then addresses now all sorted. Then communication preferences. Uh, yeah, so we're going to click on show all on this one. And all we're going to do is we're going to actually change a couple of settings here. The reason why we do this is because every time you list an item, um, it will actually send you an email and we don't want that email every single time. And then if we go to the part where it says seller, um, seller, so we go, yeah, that's it, the seller bit. And then there's, we, sorry, it says item did not sell. 
we change that to none. That's quite a rare one, but the reason why we put say none to that one is because every now and again you'll um, listing you either remove listings, uh, it'll end the items, or they'll naturally come to an end and they won't relist. So we just need to say none because you don't get that email. We click listing confirm to none. The reason why is because every time you list an item at the start, we did this, didn't we? We didn't have this um, check. We didn't all change it. Some people did. And uh, you, when you list an item, we're listing thousands sometimes. You'll get time. an email for every single one. Yeah, so it's very annoying. I mean, guys, you can put your own preferences here as well. You might not want to know if when you sell an item or not. We, yeah. we do. Uh, just pings us an email yeah. to say. Um, but yeah. Um, what else is there? Uh, so you what do now is click save because all the others aren't really important. Make sure when you're pressing save, you just press save at the bottom of so you set it here. Each section. Each yeah. section. Do not wait to get to the bottom of the page to do it because it won't save. Yeah, <laughs> and then you'll save. still get all those emails and everything. So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom. And then you see the checkbook checkbox at the bottom here? I'm going to untick all of these, and the reason why is because all the, these will actually just prompt and come up every time you log in, or you'll get extra information that we don't need. And we click save, and that's that done. There we go. All right, guys, now next you want to go to site preferences, and you just once again want to go through these settings. And yeah, so on with site preferences. The first thing we want to start doing is we want to start looking at the um, use the out of stock option. So you want to click yes on that one and then just apply that. And this just means basically, the, the like it says in the description, the uh, listing actually remains active as such. So it stays on eBay, but it will actually show a zero. And this is, again, this is where uh, eSync and, and eBay link up because eSync will actually change the stock to zero. Um, your listing will still be live as such. It'll just when it comes back in stock, it'll go back onto eBay. Um, so it's all done sort of automatically for you, which is nice and simple. But yeah, we just yeah. want to take yes there. With, with site preferences, there's a few more options. There are a few more things we have to switch on here. So it's probably the mo one of the most important ones. Probably the most important of all the settings. So all we're going to do now is go down to uh, is it payment from buyers? Yep, yeah, right at the top there. Yeah, and all we're going to do is going to click edit on the far right hand side of the page. And with this one, I'm going to say use checkout and um, tell buyers prefer PayPal for payments, offer PayPal as a payment method in all my listings. And then we're just going to click submit at the bottom of the page. Okay, that's done. There you go. So just make sure they all say yes, yes on and include my items. Then you know it's all been all done. And I go back on site preferences. And then we're just going to double check everything. So you see where it says payment from buyers, where we were before. You can see it all says yeses now. We want to make sure that they're all yes, so we know that's been done. So the next thing we go on to is postage and packaging preferences. And we're going to offer the global shipping program. This is very important, guys. This um, says, well, is exactly what it says. It basically means we can now sell all of our products to, well, across the world. So your sales <coughs> straight away just increase, I'd say, by at least 20% just yeah. from just from doing this. Yeah, yeah. So just as Matt was saying, from, from our experience, um, offering the global shipping program, which a lot of people still don't do, which is surprising, um, it actually can increase sales around 20% and also on... More expensive items, I've noticed that it's sometimes up to 50% of my sales have gone through the global shipping program. Um, and how, just briefly, just how, just to let you know how it works, is the item will get sent straight from, so Amazon will ship it out like they would to a customer. They send it straight to this global, global shipping program. Uh, it's a center where they sort the parcels and then they'll be sent out to that country. So this is sort of an agreement that eBay have. Um, this makes it cheaper for them. The buyer pays for that uh, sort of international shipping and their local cost. It goes to their country and then goes to a local courier and gets sent straight to their door. Um, so, yeah. Definitely. We also want them to require a phone number for delivery. Also, make sure you tick that and then tick the apply box. Reason being is just because uh, EasySync um, and Amazon require for you to have a phone number. So, 
Easy Sync can then just take their number and put it straight into the uh, into into filling out the form. So yeah. once again, that's a standard. Yeah. Hands off. Um, just to explain the, some of the things above as well. Um, there's one that says offer click and collect. Click and collect is a service that people like Argos do. I think Sainsbury's do it, and a couple of other stores. And that's basically where um, the item actually gets sent to an Argos or to a Sainsbury's, and people kind of go up to like a collection desk. And there'll be a code that goes out on the parcel. They just confirm that code. Again, it goes all through eBay. They, they sort everything out. And then the person can collect it from, from that store. So if they don't want to get sent to their home. Yes, precisely. And the other one, offer combined uh, payments and postage. We actually change that to a no. And the reason being is because all our delivery, all, everything's free anyway. Um, and also if we decide to actually include, what does that one say? We just untick that box, guys, and then press save. Okay. And we've just uh, noticed that it's changed. Settings have changed a little bit since we started, so we've just noticed that's changed what it was before. Um, so, yeah, the combined postage and payments, what we do is we actually send everything out for free because we're using the Prime membership anyway. Yeah, that's it. We don't combine, we don't combine anything. So, yeah, so just straightforward. simply put it no. Put it as no. Um, right, moving on. That's what we need to do. Um, see where it's manage communications with buyers. So just here, here guys, highlight it for you. And all we're going to do there is make sure it says um, manage to the Q&A section, we edit it. And we... Just clicking edit on the far right hand side. The top two are fine. See answer to FAQs. Again, this makes it a little bit easier because if you have FAQs on your listings, you have thousands of listings, so it's better if you don't have the FAQs on there. It just makes everything a little bit easier. Also, with phone numbers as well, guys, make sure you make make sure it definitely is only show these details after a purchase. Reason being, otherwise you're going to get a lot of inquiries yeah. of people just calling you up, yeah. and it's, it can be a real pain. Which you can't stop all the time with the uh, with the with the phone calls. Um, when you're uh, a business as well, sometimes you do actually have to to show a number as well. So. Some customers uh, may call you up. Again, they're just going to be inquiring, so you know it's a nice and easy phone call to deal with. Not many people ring up at all. We don't get many phone no, calls. No, no. Uh, I've got a separate number for it as well, so you can choose what, what times you want to pick up calls and everything. Going back, going back to the site preferences. Okay, so if you want to go to... Business seller preferences, and this is just to show people, so people are aware of what it is. Uh, That's the one, just there. Okay. So we click on edit, and this is we just want to show you this, right, everyone. Um, yeah, just go to the right. That's the one. And so they see the information that's now on the left. This is what's going to be shown on the listings. Now you can try and delete some of the information, but it will still show. Um, it's, and it's because we have to show the information. It's kind of like a European policy. So um, we have to show the business information. So again, your number number is likely to be displayed at this point. So what I do recommend is at first you can use your mobile number, but this number can be changed. So you just change it in your um, your settings on your under personal information. And I recommend just to change it to a phone number. That's like a business number, a second number, maybe maybe one you can use at certain times in the day. And again, it's just so you're not mixing your business and your in your, your your personal calls it makes things a little bit easier. Yes. Also. To add to this page, but guys, um, if you would like to, when you set up your company, uh, you, this is where you fill in your company registration number. As it doesn't need to be done straight away, but do try and get on it as quickly as possible just because it's good information to have. Uh, eBay do like for you to have a registration number. Yeah. Um, return policy. So here you can fill out just, we'll, we will be covering business policies in general, but here you might want to say, something like a uh, 30 day return window or something like that. Um, just so that people, any buyer will know that they've got up to 30 days to return the item yeah. if they're not happy with it. The reason why it's 30 days is because Amazon Prime also gives us 30 days. And yeah, I'd say that's pretty much it. So here it's just offering to add a VAT number, yeah. just once again, yes. I'm not VAT registered. Yeah, some, something not important right now. And then lastly, what we're going to move down to is now return preferences. On this, yeah. Um, returns preferences. 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Found it. So let's click on it on that one. So what what happens here? Well, this is something we actually found out. Um, eBay do automatic returns, which you know can improve efficiency. The only thing is when we're using prepaid postage labels from Amazon. We and we need to make sure that the customers are getting the labels. So when the auto return kicks in, like it can do for whatever reason. So if the customer like admits that actually I don't want this item anymore, I'm happy to pay for this label. What eBay do is automatically generates a label, which is a bit can be frustrating for us because of course that means it gets sent straight to us, and we still have to put a label on it our own to go to Amazon. So this actually gives us time. So it actually gives us a few days to give them this number, which instead we can give them a prepaid label. So all we have to do is tick this box. Which which you will be getting for free from Amazon. Yeah. So just by ticking this box, it makes a world of difference. Yeah. Um, this many, actually took a while for us to figure out. How many, and, you, how many are you getting at one stage? How many oh, uh, returns? Yeah, when I was when I was getting doing a lot of sales, I was getting a lot of returns. I think I got about 14 in one week was one was probably the highest yeah yeah and obviously that that stacks up in your bedroom <laughs> it's quite frustrating yeah. ever since i turned this rma number on and changed my return address it did take about a week for it to to sort of filter everything out but i haven't had a return since so it really really is helpful to yeah. do this guys um Jono's done it as well. I believe you still get one I st or two. I still get a few a week. But it's very, um, very limited. But it's a lot, a lot fewer than it used to be. Um, and it's a lot easier. And we've taught our VAs, our virtual advisors, what, how to deal with it and how to upload a prepaid label. So we see hardly any parcels or even have to upload labels as much anymore either so precisely so it's all it's all rather hands off yeah that's it for site preferences other than that guys you might just want to go through go through the rest of these bullet points and make any adjustments or changes that suit suit yourself uh with regarding subscriptions don't worry about that we're going to cover that in another video 